edition of the EV Revolution show. I'm here at Fully Charged Live in Vancouver in my booth, but I'm mainly walking around, not spending much time in the booth. Uh, I'll give you a quick rundown on the show, talk about some of the highlights here, some of the product announcements, and give you my thoughts overall. Uh, so far, just in the first hour, it's a very positive vibe. It's actually a big lineup for people to get in. So showing the interest in electrification, which is great to see. So sit back, relax, enjoy the show. So, we revamped the design, added advanced technology and practical storage. And of course, we made it bigger. With 77 millimeters of increased rear legroom and 179 liters of increased cargo space. The powertrain of the new Kona EV is equipped with a 64.8 kilowatt hour battery, made it an electric motor producing 150 kilowatt, or equivalent to 201 horsepower. The estimated all electric range is 418 kilometers based on our internal preliminary testing. The all new Kona family, both the gasoline and the EV, started off with this EV model entirely. As a result, this Kona EV has a really EV derived futuristic design with expressive characters that look muscular and rugged. 
On the front, we have the signature pixelated Siemens Horizon LED light bar that goes across the entire front end, just above its aerodynamic nose. Now, let's talk interior space. Simply speaking, it is bigger in all measurements, whether it be headroom, legroom, shoulder room, and cargo space, but with key focus on the rear legroom and rear cargo space. 77 millimeters increase in the rear legroom is impressive and noticeable immediately. And this increase is partly due to the new slim style front seat design with ultra high strength steel structure, reducing the seat thickness by 30%. The interior of the new Corona EV is a wide and slim design concept that is driver-centric with high-tech visuals from the dual integrated segment-leading 12.3-inch displays on a floating-style module, one for the infotainment system and the other for the digital cluster. Behind the steering wheel, we have the new column-mounted shift-by-wire gear selector, which provides a cleaner layout to the set console area, allowing better storage spaces where you can see the wireless charging pad. Curious about the infotainment system? The new infotainment is powered by a new software system with faster CPU and memory, controls for a new GUI. Overall, it is easier to use, such as a quick control swipe down menu to access some frequently used setting items. Safety has been updated with the latest Hyundai SmartSense technology. It now adds surround view monitor for your 360 bird's eye view in high resolution, blind view monitor for your live digital view of your blind spots on your digital cluster, we have the remote smart parking assist to remotely move your car forwards and backwards out and in of tight parking spots without you in the driver's seat. The new Kona now adds iPedal driving. Most of you may refer to this as one pedal driving. It allows the Kona to drive, accelerate and decelerate even to a full stop by only using the acceleration pedal. It is the same system available in our Ionic lineups on the side here, and now it is available in the Kona E. This concludes our presentation. Thank you all for joining. We're really excited to bring the Kona Electric to the market in early 2024. On behalf of Kennedy Canada, we would like to thank the entire Fully Charged Live team for the hospitality and the opportunity. So one of the good things about these kinds of specific events geared around EVs um, and for the public, of course, is the ability to do test drives. Now, a lot of the car shows will engage plug and drive and other organizations around the world that do something similar. But this show is running their own using the OEM fleets here to run test drives. So the good thing about it is that there's about 40 vehicles here that you can drive all in all. They've got them spread out inside and outside and with lots of different brands. You know, we've got BMW models. You can come here and drive an iX, right? Fantastic. Come here and drive some Polestars that you can see here. Um, what else we got here? Lots of Polestar 2s. No Polestar 3s, not yet, but Polestar 2s. We've got some Nissan Arias here. Beautiful car. I, I did a review on pretty well everything you see here, with the exception of these guys that I've done some uh, substantial reviews for. Lots of Vinfast VF8s here in the fleet that you can come out and, and take for a spin. So. Uh, just really, really impressive that they're able to build out this kind of inventory um, in a relatively short amount of time, you know, and only a few months to plan for this show. Um, and, you know, Mach-E from Ford, we've got ID4s, F-150s, uh, EV6s, Nero's, another EV6, and the list goes on and on. So, again, great events. You know, if you see something where you are in your neck of the woods, that are EV, especially the fully charged guys as they roam the world, but other events as well, even some locals that do drive test drives or allow uh, consumers to drive them, definitely check them out, it's worth it. So in addition to being here at Fully Charged Live, there's a couple of vehicles that I was looking for and I'm really happy that I was able to find the 2024 BMW i5 because I'm really stoked about this vehicle for BMW. I really think this is going to be the one that gives them a lot of traction on the electrification space because it really is a sweet spot for them in that 5 Series sedan. So let me tell you just a little bit about it. This is a pre-production unit that they have out here, I believe. Uh, so I'll show you some video and stuff. But to give you some of the specs, this is a 2024 uh, BMW i5, it's their M60 xDrive version. Um, so it's very comparable, I guess, in specs and, and performance features to the M550i that's out there today in the gasoline version. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about that from a price point. Now this is comes in an all-wheel drive uh, uh, variant, of course, with that xDrive designation. It's got an 81.2 kilowatt hour battery pack, producing 593 horsepower and 800 586 pound-feet of torque power availability to the motors, to dual motors. 
What that means is a zero to 100 kilometers per hour in about three and a half, 3.8 seconds, so that's pretty quick, with a top speed of 230 kilometers per hour for those people that are thinking of the Autobahn. Now, range on this EPA range is rated at 412 kilometers. We know through just normal driving that you can get more when the temperatures are nice, so that 412 should be a really achievable number in this vehicle. Um, I'll walk over and talk about cargo and some of the other things, but those are the base specs. This is a fantastic looking vehicle. Again, it's got a nice size. Um, what I would compare this to is probably the Model S at that price point. And this is actually a little bit bigger, a little longer, slightly taller and a little wider inside, just you know, by uh, some, some millimeters there looking at the specs. So it's got some really good specs. Let's go check out the, uh, the cargo space. Now this does not have a frunk. So underneath here, which, I'll, which you'll see in the B-roll, is just an engine, cowl, throw some windshield washer fluid. Otherwise you don't have to really do much, just the motors, the electronics and everything here. So there's, there's really no room for a frunk. But let me go look at the back. Right, so if we check out the cargo capacity on this. Again, it's got a really nice big boot and uh, as you can see by the B-roll, it's a really good sized trunk with a nice uh, trunk size opening here. Cargo capacity is 490 liters uh, behind the second row or 17.3 cubic feet. I haven't seen the numbers on what it is with the uh, second row folded down, but I'll insert them at this point if I find it, and you'll see what that full cargo space would be with the with the second row down. It's a good amount of room. Also on this, it really has a nice uh, deep boot here. Um, there's some charging cords and a case in here, but it actually goes down, oh, like, oh, about, probably about that much, you know. Uh, what is that, maybe a foot or so? So it's actually got a pretty good deep well in here, similar to the Model 3 type of thing. Maybe just ever so slightly smaller than 3, but it's a good use of size. So that's pretty good. You have a side pocket there for like a windshield washer fluid and stuff. And then you have a little lip here that, <coughs> excuse me, that you can put some stuff. So good use of space here. Um, they've done a good job. All right, so just see about getting into the i5 here. The guy had the seat all the way back. So even with the seat all the way back, I've got a pretty good amount of leg room here. Still got a fist. They concave the, the back of the seats in to form factor the legs. Good enough room. It does not have a flat floor. Um, so it does have a, that transmission hump, which is a little disappointing. I would hope that BMW would kind of fix that and get rid of that. But they're probably using some similar chassis to the 5 Series and electrifying it. But they always do a good job in that. Otherwise, a very comfortable cabin. I think somebody might have turned the seat heater on because it seems pretty warm back here. Uh, I'm, gonna turn, I'm not sure, but um, turn it off, I think. I think that's what's going on. Go to, why is it so warm? Nice, comfortable, obviously excellent use of materials. Um, B&W sound, it's going to sound amazing. Uh, but, you know, it, sh it should be for a 5 Series interior. Really, really nice. So just to wrap up here on the i5 quickly, uh, hope you enjoyed this first quick look at it. Now, MSRP on this, the base is $95,000 Canadian. Certainly a lot of money, right? Up there with Model S territory and certainly lower than the QE and the QS products from Mercedes. Um, as shown, this model is $112,600 Canadian. It's got a bunch of options in it. Now, if you compare that to the ICE version of the BMW, I mentioned earlier that this is comparable in performance specs a category to the M550i. The base price on that is $89,900, so let's see $90,000. So we have about a $5,000 difference in base prices. That, to me, means that this i5 is such a bargain when you compare it to the ICE version that it basically competes with on its own brand. You know, if I drove 20,000 kilometers a year, I'd be paying roughly about 45 to 4,700, let's say 4,500 uh, dollars or so a month, uh, a year just on fuel to do that, uh, that mileage on this vehicle. But if I'm charging it at home, I'm paying about uh, $300 a year. That's, that's how big the gap is, folks. It's a tremendously cheap alternative fuel in electrification, especially at home charging. So I'd be saving easily $4,000 to $4,500 a year uh, in that because uh, that, uh, it, it's, it, the gas could even be more, could be even closer to 5,000, right? Depending, it's about two bucks a liter, it needs premium, right? Here in Canada. So it's a tremendous saving. So that $5,000 difference in base price you pretty well make that back in a year of driving 20,000 kilometers. So plus or minus a couple of months, you're well within two years. So it's certainly worth your advantage to look at an all electric vehicle that has these capabilities, especially if you have the ability to home charge uh, where you're gonna recoup and really, really save. It's got good fast charging. Any specs that I, I have, of course, I've thrown up on the screen here that I can find, but um, it's so, 
new to Canada, um, that nothing is shipping yet. I was talking to one of the guys, now they expect to hopefully start seeing early deliveries in the early part of 2024, probably the Q1, uh, sorry, the first half of 2024. I don't have any other specific time frames there, but we'll continue to watch this space. Again, I think this is a killer product for BMW because the 5 Series is already a fantastic sedan, mid-size sedan, uh, for what they offer. I mean, the 7 Series is great. You've seen my video on that, but that's big and that's really expensive. You know, this is a hot market for BMW. They've done extremely well in this market with their current 5 Series. So I think they're going to do even better with the i5 and I wish them all the best. This is an excellent, excellent look, first look at this product. One of the premieres for at, here at Fully Charged Live was by Polestar. It's the Polestar 3, the first time that they've revealed it here in Canada uh, in person. It looks great. It's a great uh, mid-size SUV. Let me give you some of the rundown on this. It's a 2024 model that'll start production in the first half of next year. Uh, it's going to be built in the U.S. and it's alongside the Volvo's EX90 platform. So they actually share the, the new SPA2 platform for, uh, for this vehicle along with the Volvo. Now, this is new for Polestar. It continues on with their design language, which is really nice. A couple of aero things is they have a gap at the front hood here to allow airflow better. It's similar to the back rear spoiler where there's, a, there's an opening for the air to go under and over the spoiler, apparently increasing aerodynamics and giving you better range. Now, this is only going to come in a dual motor. 
five-seater uh, midsize SUV, the variant. That uh, motor will put out 517 horsepower at si and 671 pound-feet of torque, about 620 on the base and 671 on the performance, so that's really, really quick. All this power comes from a 111 kilowatt hour battery pack uh, to give you an EPA supported range on the base model of up to 482 kilometers. Pretty good for a midsize SUV that this is nicely equipped. From a charging perspective, it will support up to 11 kilowatts of AC fast charging. So no problem to charge this overnight at home to whatever you want to. For road tripping, it's got very capable charging. And that's one thing I've seen with the Polestars is they've thought about people that want to drive long distances and that want to fast charge quickly. So it does support up to 250 kilowatts of charging pull, which again, the industry standard or the norm being now 10 to 80% in about that 25 to 30 minute time frame. So that's pretty, uh, pretty basically table stakes now from the, from the industry as we even see times quicken. Uh, as I mentioned, the production will start in the first half of 2024, and the capability of this vehicle uh, beyond just carrying five people and stuff is it will allow you up to 3,500 pounds of towing, depending on what kind of setup you have. Uh, it's got a nice stance, of course, a little higher because it is an SUV, good clearance, and the Volvo products are pretty smooth. You know, the interiors are nice and elegant. They're very simple interiors. They carry with that Swedish design language and that uh, minimalistic again similar to tesla where it's very basic and minimalistic but very uh, upscale use of materials and use of equipment and just the styling that goes into these vehicles is very nice um, the only i guess slightly negative that i would say on this is the starting price it's just under a hundred thousand dollars canadian 99 and change i believe for a base msrp uh, that's a lot for a mid-size suv i know polestar is a is a upstage brand um, similar to Volvo, of course, but you know a lot of these cars that are coming out at that almost triple digit uh, or, or you know six figure price point, I should say, uh, it really is a hard conversation to have with consumers as we're trying to get, to get people to look at electrification and price is still a very big concern for consumers. So, you know, there's definitely mathematics that we can apply to this for savings on fuel. And, you know, let's say you're gonna save $400 a month on fuel because you're gonna charge at home and you can put that 400 bucks a month to a car payment, I get it. So, you know, we can do some math to help, but it's still conceptually a, a big hurdle for consumers to look at, uh, to overcome initially until we break it down uh, about those price points. So, you know, I really wish some of these products coming out would start coming out at some lower MSRPs. In saying that, I think Polestar is going, going to do well with this vehicle in the segment that it's going after. It's a pretty heated segment though, right? It's, it's becoming, it's a very popular category, of course, for the all electric manufacturers, and that's where they've uh, positioned and gone after. So I wish Polestar the best, and I, and I look forward to getting some seat time, because I'm sure this is gonna be a very capable, competent, and a lovely, and a joy of a vehicle to drive. Um, you know, I enjoy driving the Polestar 2. Uh, I enjoy driving the Volvo products, uh, uh, of course, because they're very similar uh, in their manufacturing, of course, in their build quality, very high build quality. So wish them the best of luck. So stay tuned and keep your eyes for more information uh, coming later next year on the Polestar 3.